Vladimir Putin becomes Russia's president for life from the hill. Opinion contributor Dov S. Zakheim. Uh, views expressed by contributors are their own and not the view of the hill. Thanks to an overwhelming vote of confidence from about three fourths of the Russian electorate, Vladimir Putin can now remain president of Russia until 2036. He will be 84 years old when he completes the second of the two additional six year terms that Russian voters awarded him in a rush in a referendum that ended on June 30th. The referendum's final results are not yet all in, but its outcome is not in doubt. The referendum that guaranteed Putin's tenure, assuming he remains the picture of health that he constantly demonstrates before those who are adoring supporters, actually addressed 205 amendments to the Russian constitution, apart from the question of his extended tenure. Among these were popular ones, such as marriage as a heterosexual union, indexation guarantees for pensions, and a variety of other social benefits. The tenure proposal was buried among the plethora of amendments, rendering it almost impossible for Putin's extension to be rejected. So the popular ones, it says marriage is a heterosexual union. Now, just as a reminder, yeah, that's how backwards Russia still is. Three quarters of the voters just came out I mean, again, numbers, numbers not finalized, but vote of confidence for about three quarters of the electorate, not just of voters, but I guess of eligible. Who knows how they're calculating that? But obviously overwhelming. Now, I, I, when, when I say, like, are, do you have to be backwards to be against gay marriage? Um, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of policy, you do. Now, if you're against gay marriage, OK, don't marry a dude if you're a dude. Don't marry a chick if you're a chick. Uh, it's really that simple. You're against gay marriage. Uh, don't have one. Uh, if you don't want to support it, uh, don't support it. But to say I want to use the government to make it illegal, I support a ban on gay marriage, that I want to, to stop other people from having this voluntary thing that they, they otherwise have already. Like, yeah, sorry, that's backwards. It's a measure of how much Putin has really stunted Consciousness, awareness, uh, who knows what else? Uh, compassion, empathy in Russia. So by 2036, Putin will have outlasted at least three American presidents and a minimum of four if Donald Trump is not reelected this year. His time in office, if one includes his four years as prime minister when he was the real power behind then President Dmitry Medvedev, will total nearly 37 years. That extended tenure would render him the longest serving Russian or Soviet leader since Peter the Great, whose portrait graces Putin's Kremlin office. Putin's publicly stated goal is to restore Russian greatness to at least that of the Soviet era. While he does not have the ideological impulses that spurred Lenin, Stalin, and their successors, Putin shares the same geopolitical concerns that motivated all of his communist and Tsarist predecessors. He also has lifted the tactics that were central to the Soviet playbook. As American diplomat George Kennan observed in his long telegram from Moscow on February 22, 1946, at the outset of what became the Cold War, quote, at the bottom of Kremlin's neurotic view of world affairs, is traditional and instinctive Russian sense of insecurity. Russian rulers have invariably sensed that their rule was relatively archaic in form. Originally, this was insecurity of a peaceful agricultural people trying to live on vast exposed plain in neighborhood of fierce nomadic peoples. To this was added as Russia came into contact with economically advanced West Fear of more competent, more powerful, more highly organized societies. For this reason, Russia's rulers have always feared foreign penetration. Russians will participate officially in international organizations where they see opportunity of extending power or of inhibiting or diluting power of others. Effort will be made to disrupt Western national self-confidence. 
to hamstring measures of national defense, to increase social and industrial unrest, to stimulate all forms of disunity. Poor will be set against rich, black against white, young against old, newcomers against established residents. And this really is responsible for a lot of the American paradigm towards Russia, all the way up to Reagan's references to the evil empire. And the evil empire of Russia is now the subject of this kind of international demonization. And remember, the evil empire set up as the, you know, polar opposite force during the Cold War to America as, you know, these, these two great superpowers. Well, just to put things in perspective, Russia's economy is somewhere around a 30th to a 40th. That is a tiny fraction the size of the American economy. But it has been raised up many times as a specter of fear. And really, it's, it's more accurate to think of Russia as a satellite of the American empire or a satellite of the same global banking empire than to think of it as a rival superpower. So what it does, what it represents, you know, Russia meddling with the American elections, Think, stop, just stop and think about that for a second, the ridiculousness of that narrative, right? Because what this suggests, like, when people are, Russia was meddling in American elections, what that does is give these countries a certain anthropomorphic motivation reality that distorts reality rather than describes it. Did Russia interfere with the U.S.? Now, first of all, to accurately describe what you're trying to say with that statement, you have to say the Russian government, which really, to even be accurate there, you have to say certain elements of the Russian government. But you have to step back and go, who controls the Russian government? Could elements in the Russian government get away with something meaningful like that without the permission of the string pullers? No, it's the same people behind getting Trump and Clinton the nominations who used Russia to meddle in American elections, if that's what happened in any kind of meaningfully significant way. Back to our, our Russian friend, uh, senior advisor Zakheim. Putin benefits from a distinct advantage over his Tsarist and communist predecessors, however. None of them was able to enjoy the support that he has received from Trump from the day the American president assumed office and even before then. None of Russia's other leaders ever had any serious impact on America's elections. None had the presidents of the United States take their word over that of his own intelligence experts, even when it appeared that Russian irregulars possibly had killed American troops. Even back in 2014, Putin was able to annex Crimea and send his little green men into Ukraine without a peep from the White House since Trump took office. Putin may only benefit from the White House's sycophancy for a few more months. Perhaps as Trump's poll numbers continue to sink, Putin will decide that he must exploit the window of opportunity that he now has to move his forces into Belarus, thereby placing Poland in a Russian vice. Even if he does not, Putin's extended tenure means that Russia no longer can be seen solely as a near-term threat to American interests. On the contrary, the next several presidents will have to contend with a man whose life's mission is, as Kennan so elegantly put it in his long telegram, quote, to seek security only in patient but deadly struggle for total destruction of rival power. And am I saying here that Putin is a total puppet? No, 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 no. Like any major player today, he is a power broker. And he is quite the player himself in establishing this role. There are members of the super class who would rather he not be there. But as long as he's there, I guarantee you he will continue to serve their agenda. As he is part of the super class himself at this point. And as we see... This major power grab is going to continue to serve the agenda of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, whether that's through brazen consolidations of power like this, 
subtle manipulations of elections behind the scenes, or who knows, maybe something a little more obvious, like using the coronavirus as the excuse to add $9 trillion of U.S. Federal Reserve note liquidity to the markets. I'm not encouraged by this trend because it looks like Russia and Putin have consolidated their role as the evil little empire with their little green men doing the will of the other big power players who are operating more behind the scenes.